What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Debbie Rao YouTube channel. Me and Jay are back with our Debbie podcast, but we are doing, if you watch it on YouTube, we're doing a 30-minute YouTube clip here of the first round, a 2025 rookie mock draft. We're going to be diving into 12 players that you should be giving an eye on, diving into their strengths, their weaknesses, kind of talking about all of that. Um, then after the YouTube video, we're going into podcast form. We're going to keep going on our podcast. You can find below, going even deeper for you guys, guys that could rise or fall outside of the first round or inside the first round. But let's get started and let's talk a little bit about this mock. So me and Jay come down here. We just started our Debbie podcast. We have a couple episodes under our belt. So if you're on YouTube only, go check that out. If you like college football and Debbie and, and just CFF, C2C, anything like that, you should definitely go check us out there. But we have a rookie mock draft for you. So you dynasty people, you hang on. Don't be clicking out of YouTube right now. We're going to be talking about guys from next year, talking about value, where the value lies. In this mock, we have a 12-team Superflex PPR tight end premium-ish. So that's not a heavy tight end premium. We're going to alternate picks. Me and Jay are going back and forth. And then we're going to understand picking values. So we're going to talk about kind of where the tiers are right now. Um, if you're trading picks, where are those at? And if you have some trades for 2025 first, drop them in the comments below. Um, me and Jay will get to them as we go for YouTube. In the podcast, if you leave a review, ask a trade question, we will get to them there as well. So why don't we get started with the one-on-one? I gave Jay the one-on-one because he's my elder statesman. Uh, so he, he got the first pick. So Jay, where are you going with the one-on-one in the Superflex rookie mock draft? I think it comes down to two players. Um, and those are, that are my top tier here. And so I'm going to go with Luther Burden. But I think that there's two players that can be in that 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 very first pick here. Um, so Luther Burden, he's 5'11", 208 pounds, 29 BMI. This is his third year at Missouri. Um, he's a presumed early declare. He's only 20.6 years old. On an age-adjusted basis, he beat thresholds in year one and two on a weighted dominator and uh, in year two on a, um, a reception yards per team pass attempt and EPA per play. In 2023, he had 120 targets for 1,200 yards and 93 yards per game. Um, his uh, 3.29 yards per route run is phenomenal. 32.7% targets per route run. Um, and this is this is probably the, the highlight here, the 8.4 yards yak per reception. Um, we, we talk about Malachi Corley last year, who's just an uh, incredible yak, yak player. Um, he was at 8.6. Um, Luther Burden last year, 8.4. So that's the kind of level that we're talking about in terms of yak per reception. 11.7% um, uh, uh, first downs per route run. Uh, PFF receiving grade of around 91, which I think it puts him in the, the top five of all of college football last year on our, our PFF receiving grade. His career A dot is less than 10. Uh, it was 9.7 in year one and 8.7 in, um, in year two, which kind of describes the type of player he is, yeah. um, sort of that lower A dot, but that higher yak type of guy. Um, he played 80% of his snaps in the slot last year in 2023, but only 13% of, of his um, um, plays in the slot as a freshman year. So it's more to dem kind of demonstrates that he can play both inside and outside. Um, in mock draft database, which we use for projecting sort of draft capital for these players, um, they have him in the, in the early to mid first round picks, sometimes going in the top 10 of, of next year's NFL draft. In my, um, in my model, uh, which we talked about uh, in last week's uh, podcast, uh, sort of the, the process of how I come up with all this analytics and, and come up with the model, he's in my tier one um, in the Stein index. And there's only one other player in that tier one with him. And I think we're going to find out that next guy pretty soon here. Yeah, we're going to find him out. But I think what, you know, Jay points out, and he does a good job of it, the advanced analytics, the stats there. I like the idea of, I love that he kind of maneuvered inside the slot and on the outside he's versatile, right? Like he did that. Like his first year, we're like, hey, can he do that? Is he going to be versatile? Is he going to go there? Um, but yeah, he did. He kind of bounced back, right? So like you said, the 80% snaps in 23, 13% his freshman year. So this offense really utilized him and, and placated to his strengths. And, and a lot of a lot of comps out there. Debo. I hear Debo all the time for Luther. In our Debbie guide, we actually – and we we – we comped based on ceiling, like what does this kid play like? And Christian Williams did the wide receivers. He comped him to Jamar Chase. And I think that's fair. I think Jamar was a fantastic football player at LSU. Luther is very, very similar in that mindset in terms of what he is. I don't know if he's as explosive as Jamar was in college. Um, maybe some nuance there, but he definitely has it. Uh, and, and really, from the from a from a standpoint of Luther Burden, the wide receiver at Missouri, for those of you that don't know, uh, 
strengths from a film base, athleticism and yak, as he kind of talked about it there, talked about his 8.4 yak per reception. That's really what stands out on tape. Play strength. That's where Jamar's at. Like the play strength is Jamar Chase play strength. That's where we get that comp from. And the inside out versatility that he brought up. Areas of improvement. I mean, route running, yes. Inconsistent hands, kind of. Um, but he improved so much from his freshman to sophomore year. I expect a lot more going into his junior year. Um, and, and yeah, you can't really go wrong with him at 101. I had the 102 being the young man of the show. And I took Tedaroa uh, McMillan. Ted McMillan out there, wide receiver out of Arizona. 6'5", 210 wide receiver. Last year at 130 targets, 90 receptions, 1,400 yards, and 10 touchdowns. Now, when you're talking about Tet, when you're looking at him from a, from a player comp perspective, I had this comp a while ago, probably last year, and I put it in our Discord, our Patreon, and people laughed a little bit and because I'm not I, – I, I hate comps. They know I hate doing comps. But I put Mike Evans, and I still believe he's kind of like Mike Evans. I, I still think he has that kind of that player comp. Um, and he is really good size-speed combo. Like at 6'5", 210, if he is that, like if we're talking about like, hey, what are they going to cook the numbers there? He has the ability to go inside and out. He has good size, good speed, gets off the line quick. Um, those are things that I like from him. Late separation ability too. He does those little things when you watch him play, especially when the ball's in the air, weights put his hands up, able to separate real quick against the defensive backs. He's a very nuanced um, wide receiver in that man. Strong hands, able to go up and get it. Um, routes got to improve a little bit, like when you're thinking of him too. And that's really where we see, we don't see a lot of press. We didn't see it last year at all in, in, with the Pac-12. Big 12, I don't know if we're going to see it there. Like, what does that work look like from an improvement standpoint? But it would not shock me to see Tevin Millen being wide receiver one next year. Like, it wouldn't shock me for him to be in that mindset. Um, and that's really where I have him there. And it's really these two guys. That's the tier, right? Like, these two guys are really the tier, in my opinion. Um, and then it drops off a little bit. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, Luther Burden, Ted McMillan, you should look for those guys to be at the top of your drafts next year. And I think there's a lot of um you know safety in those two be yes. just because of the the first two years that they've put together in terms of production and what they look like i think that there's uh there's um some confidence we have in those guys being in the top end of of your of your super flex drafts next year yeah 100 all right go to 103 where are you at with 103 you shocked mm -hmm. me with this bit uh, 103, uh, I'm really high on Emeka Buka, even though this is his fourth year. Um, this is probably non-consensus here, but I still think Emeka Buka is uh, a tremendous potential for, for the NFL. He's 6'1", 205 pounds, 27 BMI. This is his fourth year, so he's not an early declare, which in my process does ding him a little bit, but he's also not the fifth or sixth year type of guy. He's faced some injuries in his career, uh, but in 2022, so not last year, but the year before, he kept pace with Marvin Harrison Jr. in that C.J. Stroud-led passing attack. That year, he had 74 receptions, 5, uh, 1,150 yards, 10 TDs. Um, and that was his year tier. So he had that sort of early type of breakout to his to his game. Um, he's averaged 60 yards per game over his career. And last, uh, that year, in year two, he had 89 yards per game. Um, his career yards per route run is a 2.66, which in year two, he had a 3.01, which is a pretty great year. Um, his career uh, targets per route run is a 25%. Um, with uh, near 28% targets per route run in that year too. Um, again, sort of like Luther Burden, he's the lower ADAP player, usually under 10 um, on, a, on the ADAP basis. Uh, but he does have that 70% slot rate for both years. So we, I think we are pretty sure that this guy is a slot receiver here. His career yak per reception is greater than seven. Um, and his highest PFF grade was in that year too at 84. Um, he's currently projected in the middle of the first round in, in most um, Debbie or in uh, mock drafts for 2025. Um, and he falls into the highest part of my tier two receivers. So mm -hmm. I do believe Luther Burden and Tech McMillan are a clear tier one, but I, I feel like it's not too far of a drop, but there is a, a there's a drop there uh, between those two and then Emeka Buka. Um, I think what really with him is – uh, and, and we sort of had the same problem with Jackson Smith and Jigba. And Jigba had a, a really great year where he outperformed um, some really great receivers. And then he had some injuries and we all forget about what happened in that year. Um, we lose sight of that really stellar performance, even at that young age. I think we're ha facing a little bit of that with Emeka Obuka. And that's why I have him so high is because he, he meets a lot of those analytical thresholds. Um, and I, I think he's gets forgotten a little bit, but yeah, definitely picking him above where, uh, it, maybe his ADP might fall in, in most leagues. 
That's okay. I think he's underrated, in my opinion. I think that when you're looking at him, you know, many people had him as the wide receiver one last year, right? Be coming into the year. They're like, hey, Emeka's that guy. Very, very consistent separator, strong hands. Really projects as a slot guy, in my opinion, um, but can be a lave type, right? Like, I think our comp, the, the ceiling comp is Amon Ross St. Brown. He has a lot of similarities to Amon Ross St. Brown at USC. Like, I know people think of the Detroit Lions. I understand that he kind of took off and did those things. But if you watch USC's tape and you watch him play there, that's kind of a mecca, right? You know, and this year, you know, he's 6'1", 206. He had the 60 targets there. I expect him to be a wide receiver one Ohio State. Like, that's where I expect him to go. And I think that they, these three guys right here, these three wide receivers, are very strong when we're talking about, like, the projection of that top 25 class and where you want him at. I went running back my next pick. I took Travion Henderson. And, you know, I, I go back and forth on Travion. I love Travion Henderson. Um, I've loved his tape since he was a – senior in high school top end speed has really good receiving ability he is a three down guy like when you watch him he can be the three down back that we've been craving coming out of uh, college give me that three down guy there very good lateral agility i think he well he had good lateral agility his freshman this year and sophomore year (laughs) his lateral agility is like i don't know if it's the injuries that he's kind of had because of his lower body and all of that But it definitely, between the tackles, he struggled. His freshman year, he did not. He looked very good his freshman year. He was probably one of the best backs in college football his freshman year. And he rivaled B. John Robinson in Debbie drafts and Debbie value and all those things, um, but has struggled to stay healthy, right? And in pass blocking, yes, that's on there if you look at the PFF grade and everything there. Last year, you know, 156 attempts, 900 yards, and 11 touchdowns. So he wasn't terrible. He wasn't bad. He just didn't look the same as that explosiveness. 5'10", 215, though, three-down guy. I'll take a shot on Travion here, and he's going to split work with the next guy that we're going to talk about. But I do think that he's a three-down back. Now, that could, you know, is he going to get day two capital? I don't know. Jay doesn't like that he's going to be a senior. I know that. We we don't necessarily like that. But I do think with the injury history and everything like that, I think he is the most talented back in the class. Doesn't necessarily mean he's going to pan out. But I had to, I took him here at 104 because – Really, do I reach for a quarterback at this spot? Not yet. I don't think with the unknown of the quarterback spot with the 25 class. So I'll just take a three-down guy that I believe in. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of believe in him too, but it's just like what how are we gonna how are those injuries gonna play out? Is it yeah. sustainable? Because when he when he's on the field playing, it looks great. Uh you know, it might not be exactly what we saw tra- freshman year, but it looks great when he's on the field. And you're right. We're going um, for three Buckeyes in a row here. We're going to go with with the fifth pick. We're going to go with uh, 1.05. We're going to go with Quinshawn Junkins. Um, And it would be fascinating to me how Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Junkins, those workloads um, um, are shared and divvied up for this season. Um, And uh, probably a lot of that has to do with who remains healthy uh, the longest or, you know, that type Mm -hmm. of thing. But um, yeah, Quinshawn Junkins, He's uh, six foot, two hundred nineteen pounds, twenty nine point seven BMI. Um, he he's a transfer. He transferred from Ole Miss. Um, he basically on the transfer he gained an inch based on Ohio State measuring him, <laughs> and he he gained nine pounds. So I don't know if that's a good nine pounds, a bad nine pounds, but you know Ohio State um, you know has put their measurements on him um, just recently for for twenty twenty four roster, and that's what he looks like now. Um, this is his third year. He's a presumed early to clear, obviously 20.7 years old. Um, this is his first season with the Buckeyes. Um, so far with at Old Miss, he met those age adjusted thresholds for fantasy points per game, yards per team play, dominator rating, backfield dominator rating, receptions, market share. The only piece that he's not hitting on is the rush yards are expected uh, metric, uh, which kind of, in my opinion, sort of describes um, how good of a runner of the football is. Uh, and and so he hasn't been hitting those, but the hope is that that sort of turns around uh, running behind uh, Ohio State's offensive line this year. Um, his PFF rush gauge for year one and two were 90.7 and 87.1. So he's ha- has very high uh, PFF scores, film type scores. Um, he had 270 carries for both years. He's had over 100,000 yards, I'm sorry, 1,000 yards for each year. And in each year he's had fit over 15 rush TDs. So tons and tons of production here at the running back position. Um, and it's just like the rush yards are expected um, uh, or per attempt uh, that he missed the PFF metrics, like yards after contact per attempt, missed tackles force per attempt and the breakaway percentage and the elusive rating. They aren't top end for him. Yeah. 
Yeah. So this is one of those backs where he's getting tons of volume, tons of stats. Um, so all those volume and stats metrics he's hitting on, but all the like efficiency type stuff, um, yards after contact, missed force tackles, all that stuff. That's the stuff that he's not hitting on, which is uh, like an interesting dynamic. But what matters most is is the guy getting all the volume for fantasy, and that's 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 kind of what we're looking at. And I think that translates into the NFL. So right now in mock draft database, he's um, running back two, and he's projected to go early in the second round. And I'm just I'm just really excited to see. We have three Buckeyes in a row here. Go 1.03, 1.04, 1.05. I'm just excited to see how this offense goes. And a lot of that will come down to how good the quarterback play is this year. But they really do have a, a two-headed monster, probably the best backfield in the nation here in Travion Henderson and Quinchon Junkins. And I hope both of them are saved and healthy and mm-hmm. uh, and they lead this, this, this Buckeye backfield and put up a lot of good stats so we can have two great fantasy players next year. Yeah, I mean, our comfort, Quinchon Jenkins, was Darius Geis, uh, former LSU running back, um, on the field, not off the field. We don't we don't go off the field with Darius Geis out there ruining our dreams. Um, but has that. I mean, I'm glad, like, so the number or your numbers, your analytical numbers and all that, it adds up to what I see on film, right? Production profile, contact balance, inside zone. But the areas of improvement, you know, that explosiveness, you know, that receiving profile, those things out there that you're like, uh, that's why I tend to kind of lean Henderson right now because I think he has that a little bit more and he's had that and he's shown that. So that's where I'm at with both of these guys. But if you – gun to your head, Jay, who gets drafted higher next next April if you had to pick? Don't give me no – I don't want to – I'm not going to answer this. If you had to choose. Yeah, I think uh, Travion Henderson does okay. just because I, I think just sort of the explosiveness that – comes with him if he has another season like he had his freshman year i he might even be a first round back um even with all the injury history but um yeah that that would i would guess travion henderson but all the all the the process that we talked about in last episode it would probably lean me a little bit more towards judkins but i just i just think that travion henderson is more of that three down back especially with the receiving ability and the brain game breaking ability Oh, perfect. I'm clipping this for YouTube, so it's on there forever on YouTube shorts. You said Travion Henderson, <laughs> first round back, baby. All right. I, this is my first pick that I had that I, I regret a little bit. I took Evan Stewart at the 106. Um, I like Evan Stewart. I think that, you know, from a talent perspective that he could be, right, he's the Oregon. He's going to Oregon. He was at Texas A&M, wide receiver, six foot 175. Hasn't had that production profile. We haven't seen that. Kind of disappears, had some dis- durability issues out there. A lot of rumors out of Texas. Texas A&M fans hate Evan Stewart. And from our video that we did on the channel, they talked about how he quit on the team. He was asking for all this money. And that kind of lines up why he went to Oregon. We know Oregon's open in the bag and NIL, and maybe he does do that. But when you do watch the tape, I and mean, when he's out there, he's healthy. Man, he's an elite separator. He has very good play strength, despite him being kind of undersized. He's a dynamic athlete. When I watch him, and I remember watching him go against Alabama that freshman year, like little things that he's been able to do on the field, it's fun. But I do think that there is a concern with Evan Stewart coming back to school after this year. Like I do think that we could see Evan Stewart come back another year. Maybe he doesn't get the draft grade that he likes. Maybe he doesn't have that. So I probably should have went quarterback here. But I took Evan Stewart. I'll hold to it, you know. But I do think that he has talent, and if they, and if and if Dan Lanning out there in Oregon is able to unlock that talent, and we're talking about him being that first round guy again, I'm all on board. I think that 106 is perfect for him. And if he does do that, you're talking about one of the better wide receiver classes we've had in the last few years. Like you're talking about very, very top end, top heavy class at that wide receiver position. Yeah, I mean, I think, and we'll we'll find out a little bit about this when we talk about fallers um, later yeah. in the podcast here. But yeah, I think Evan Stewart has the potential to be one of the better college football wide receivers in, in all of college football this year. But he also has the potential to be a big miss. Um, the, the size issues, uh, I, and I, I do agree with you. The separating ability is probably uh, top notch. But you you have size issues. The the yak per reception is really really low um, from him. And you just wonder, you know, is this a profile that the NFL is going to be really excited about? And, you know, is he is he really going to fit into that first round, second round, third round category? Maybe uh, maybe maybe day two is more about where you should fit. Um, But, you know, right now we're getting to a point where in this draft where there is some uncertainty. Um, And and I'm going to talk about that with with the next pick here. But there is uncertainty with these next few guys. Um, And so Evan Stewart is maybe 
you know, he's proved a little bit over his first two years. So maybe there is something to say about taking him here versus some of the other guys. To your point, at the 106, I felt disgusting. I didn't know where to go. So, like, if you are if you have, like, a mid-first, late first in those picks and you're looking at your contender, like, I'm all bored trading draft picks. I don't care about that. If I'm a contender, I'm going to go for it. But if you do think that you have a late first, I know that value-wise and all of that, and I know it's, it's taboo to say go trade your first for a running back right now and all those things. Um, obviously, I would wait till camp and you see the injuries and all that kind of happens. But like, th- this is the spot where you're like, I don't know where to go. And this is to me where if I'm looking at my tier, my value, this is where I'm uncomfortable. I'm comfortable kind of getting off. If I'm a mid first, but I'm the mid first away from continuing. I can ship that off for a guy. Go do that in Dynasty. I wouldn't mind kind of going and attacking that there. Um, all right. First quarterback in a super flex off the board at 107. Who are you taking? Yeah, this is sad that we had to wait all the way till pick seven to do a quarterback in Superflex drafts, but I'm going to take Carson Beck out of Georgia. Okay. Um, you know, it, it, and this is, I think this says a little bit about this class. Uh, I have a, a big board out there where I put uh, players in tiers um, and we're all the way down to tier three now here for, mm-hmm. and this is the first quarterback. And it, it's just, you know, uh, two years ago, we had CJ Stroud and, and Bryce Young that we're, per, we were pretty confident at at a very young age that these guys were going to be pretty good. Um, and their last year was kind of a wire to wire. Um, last year, we had Kayla Williams and Drake May, um, wire to wire type of guys. Um, although there are plenty of players that ha- performed really well and, and knocked themselves up into those tiers, um, you know, we don't have those. I think wire wire guys, the guys that were supremely confident about being very high end um, first round picks. These are just maybe the best probability of, of maybe attaining those, <laughs> those higher round picks. And so Carson Beck, I think is the, the first one in my uh, tier three of quarterbacks. Um, he's six, 220 pounds. This is his fifth year. So he's a red shirt senior. Um, he's projected as a top 10 pick in mock, mock draft database, largely thought of as the one, um, if not um, him or Shadur Sanders as, the one and two. Um, He didn't do much his first three years in college. Um, In fact, year one was a, was a red shirt. Year two and three were sort of like he'd get in and mop up duties type of situation. And then year four, that was his first year where he was a starter at Georgia. Um, In year four, he bested his age adjusted metrics for QBR and um, uh, adjusted yards per attempt, but missed on EPA per play. He doesn't rush the ball much. So he's not sort of the, the dual threat type of guy here. Um, and uh, he, but he does have a, a very high um, adjusted completion percentage. So he had an 80.6 adjusted completion percentage last year, and he bested my um, thresholds for big time throw percentage and turnover worthy plays percentage. Um, his his PFF grade for passing grade was a 90.8 last year. And uh, look, look, I'm not incredibly high on QBs this cycle. There'll probably be some that that rise up, and I'll get mm-hmm. excited about. But there, it's really not it. There's really not um, wire to wire guys, the guys that I'm supremely confident in this class. No. But Beck does lead the tier three in, in my in my process this year. And we're talking about super flex drops here. We're gonna it's gonna be hard to pass up these some of these QBs that have all this potential upside, all this potential value um, in the middle of the first round of the of these drafts. So I you know I feel like at this point from a value perspective, we got to start taking some of these quarterbacks. Yeah, they're good. he's going to go higher. I mean, that's the reality is that these guys, um, you know, if he gets drafted first round, he's going to be 101, 102, 103, probably. Like, I could see him being around that 103 mark if they want wide receivers there. Um, because Superflex is king. But I will say this about Carson Beck. He layers the ball really well and has very good ball placement. And that helps because, like, NFL teams are going to see that velocity, the areas field, layering the ball and doing that things. If he can take that next step, the one knock I have on him, besides the areas of improvement I have there, I mean, 6'4", 220, he had 3,900 yards last year, looked really good. The area that I struggle with Car- with Carson Beck is that in the big games, in the games that, like, even Missouri or that Alabama game in the big uh, the SEC title game, he didn't take over those games. And, and and defenses were not afraid. Like, when you watch them play, you're like, oh, they're not afraid of Carson Beck. And they kind of hit him a little bit. Those are the things that, like, that's that's more of, like, the vibe kind of look when you're like, ah, man, are these guys really afraid of these guys? And that's where I kind of hesitate a little bit with Carson Beck. But he can improve, right? Last year was his, really his first year ever played, really. And so he's going to improve. He's going to do that. Um, at the 108. Running back. I'm just going to take all the running back. Ashton Genty, uh, Boise State running back. He's a kid that I've kind of come on um, with a little bit here, um, but he's getting a little buzz here. I'm a little nervous about taking him from a G5 talent uh, in, in the area there. 
Um, size may be a concern, 5'9", 215 maybe, but like some people have talked about him maybe being around the 200 mark. Um, pass blocking, definitely areas of improvement for Ashton Gentry. But last year, Boise, 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns, look really good. He's going to be back again, and they're ready. That offense is ready to take off. They could be the, the G5 representative of, of the conferences here to go to the playoff possibly, which is going to get his buzz up even more if he stays healthy. Break tackle ability has that. Contact balance, line of um, scrimmage explosiveness, he has that. Now, taking a running back this high, it says probably more about like – the class in itself where it's kind of the wild west after that 106 mark or that 106 on um but i'll take a shot on ashton gentry that he's going to get day two capital i do think that the running back class is very very strong and very deep but who's going to break out is anybody's guess i think you have to just go with like the traits that you like and i think he does have that he reminds me of a back that can kind of last in nfl if that 215 mark is true we'll see what that 215 mark looks like next year when he gets weighed in at the at the combine or wherever he goes yeah, I love it, and I think um, you know this running back class. I think is a, is is fairly deep. Yeah. I think there's a lot of guys that are sitting right there uh, at this tier level that can break into this mm-hmm. first round here, and there's there's quite a few of them. Um, I I like Ashton Denty. I I do agree with some of the concerns that you have in terms of uh, G five and and does it does it translate? But you know, from a numbers perspective, I like the way Ashton Denty looks. All right, quarterback, man. You're getting taken all the quarterbacks. Who are you taking at 109? Who's your QB2? Uh, yeah, I'm going to take uh, Quinn Ewers. Um, yeah, you know, the, it's a fall from grace from Quinn Ewers. He goes from the, the highest rated recruit ever um, to now does he even deserve to be in the first round. Um, uh, that That's that's a, quite the fall. But yeah. I still I still think that they're, then from a numbers perspective, I do think that um, Quinn Ewers – Still looks okay, and if he has a good season this season, um, uh, you know I think that he has that sort of star power. I think he has that ability, that, uh, some, that ability that the NFL is going to uh, mm-hmm. gravitate towards. Um, he's six two two ten. Um, he was last year he was listed at one ninety five, so he's up fifteen pounds at least on the the Texas roster he, site. He, hey, I, he cut I, the mullet off. He cut the mullet off and gained some weight. That's that's what he did. <laughs> I, I, that's that is a physical improvement that is <laughs> is interesting i i think um for for uh for um for a quarterback um this is his fourth year but i i would say i qualify that because yeah. if you remember he reclassified into an earlier class to take advantage of the nil uh, opportunity um where you know he was largely thought of as the best high school quarterback of all time and he just basically wanted to cash in on that and that nil that was just coming out so he went to osu to play for ryan day for his first year and it was it was an entire basically a red shirt year he played like a few downs on the last game um that he got into uh but after that then he then transferred to texas that that next year um, and now he's going to his third year um, starting for the longhorns in 2023 he passed for uh uh 3,500 yards, 22 TDs, and he only had six INTs, and he also had five rushing touchdowns. Yeah. Um, he bested his age adjusted thresholds for fantasy points per game, QBR, EPA per play, adjusted yards per attempt. Um, and, and he also has a career, uh, um, 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 you know, uh, it took a dip last year, but a big time throw rate. He had a career um, rate of four point nine percent. It took a dip a little bit under four percent last year, and his turnover worthy play percentage was a, a career of two point five, both besting those thresholds. So, yeah. um, last year his adjusted completion percentage uh, was around seventy six point three percent, and I'm looking for something in the seventy two percent range. So he's 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 hitting all of these metrics, and his PFF pass grade was an eighty five point six. So, like you know, we see him in these big big games we see in these big moments and it's he kind of disappoints um and you know at texas the 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 um end game is college football playoff and hopefully you know some sort of national championship and he it wasn't able to get there but the on the on a numbers perspective he's meeting and beating a lot of these thresholds that you'd want to see it just doesn't look as pretty as you'd like to see it um so he's projected as a second round um quarterback at, at mock, mock draft database as the fifth QB, he's behind Shadir Sanders, Carson Beck, who we talked about, Jalen Monroe, and Jackson Dart. So there's there's three players right now that are, are behind him. Right now, he's ranked as my second QB in the Stein Stein Index, right behind Beck. But mm-hmm. all that whole group of all, all the whole group of players is is in that tier, 
And I always say within the tier, you can have your preferences, but like from a numbers perspective, he's, he hits some of those, those, those metrics that you're looking for. He does need to have a good season this year for him to get that first round draft capital. I don't, I don't think we can just count on the name recognition and what people saw from his high school film. It's, it's gotta be a good, a good, decent year this year to get that first round draft capital. Yeah, I go back and forth on Quinn because there are games like the Alabama game last year or from two years ago before he got injured. Like, he made some throws. He made NFL throws, and you're like, man. And he led that win last year, right, at Alabama. I mean, that was a great win that they had last year. And you're just like, man, he, he did it. And the great thing about Quinn Ewers, we're going to find out exactly what he is. He's playing in the SEC. Go win. Like, that's what he's going to have to do there. And that's a nice thing about Quinn. Now, if you have him in Debbie, you're hoping, baby. You're hoping that he kind of comes through for you because, I mean, he really is a no-win situation. No one's trading for him. You're not trading him because the value is just not there. Um, but he did, he can throw from multiple angles, release is great, all those things. He's got to work on his deep ball and his pre-snap reads. Those are the two biggest areas that you, he struggles with. So if he gets that deep ball accuracy and he really nails it down because he can float things, he definitely struggles there. I think that he can. I think, I mean, Christian Williams has his QB1. So Christian's talked about him as being a QB1 there, which you can't really hate on because no one knows who QB1 is, in my opinion, in this class. Like, it's just really what you see from the tape. Um, So, yeah, I I don't mind that pick. I think that's a really good pick. And if he does win in the SEC at Texas, woo! You know what? NFL GMs, they're going to fall in love with that. And we remember last year at this point, if you were talking about J.J. McCarthy being a top 15 pick or Bo Nix or Michael Penix Jr., like, people would have laughed at you. Quinn Ewers can definitely be there because they've been talking about this kid for years. So that's just part of that also. All right. I'm going to go tight end. I know everybody's shocked by this. I'm taking Colson Loveland. Uh, you know, NCAA 25 master out there. If you're playing the college football game, he's a stud. Uh, you know, tight end premium, 6'5", 245, 62 targets, 45 receptions, 649 yards, four touchdowns, plays out there in Michigan. Very, very solid tight end, but he's more of a – out, you know, slot guy, right? Elite athleticism in open field, yak ability has that. Route running and hands are very, very good. Um, they use him in different ways, which I like. And I think that when you're looking at the roster this year for Michigan, he's probably wide receiver one on that team. Samaji Morgan is there, but I, I expect him to be the wide receiver one. He's gonna have probably well, I, the quarterback situation is interesting, but I would I would just be shocked if he doesn't lead this team in targets. We'll, we'll say that. I don't want to give a target number because I'm not sure where that target's going to be. But he's going to lead this team in targets more than likely. Um, the big thing with him, separation against man, he has struggled with that, unless it's Ohio State. He seems to eat up Ohio State. <laughs> but separation against man is one of those things that when you watch him, especially in the seam, he struggles sometimes against linebackers. You can't struggle against linebackers at the college level and do well at the NFL side. Um, blocking too, can he go in line, right? Like, what does that look like? Um, he really reminds me of Zach Ertz a little bit. Like, he gives me a little Zach Ertzy vibes out there. Um, and strength off the line. I think those are the big things for areas of improvement. But from a receiving standpoint and fantasy, I love Colson Loveland. I think that he is tied in one out there, and, and I'm a big fan and believer in him. I think he's going to test well, too. He's a very, very athletic kid. Yeah, I think I, I have Coulson Loveland as a, in a tier of his own for this tight end class. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm right there with you, and it, it looks good from a numbers perspective. So I, I like him. I, I don't particularly care for him crushing on or crushing a beating up <laughs> on the Buckeyes, but uh, yeah, I do, I do, I do like him as an NFL prospect. He he looks good. All right, let's go to 111. Where you got? All right, we're gonna go Nick Singleton. Um, this is maybe a little bit of a surprise. He's been a faller in in the Debbie space for some time. Uh, but I do, I do think he has the potential um, of one of these running backs that can get into this first round uh, through through a step up in play this year. He's f- six foot, two hundred twenty seven pounds, thirty point eight BMI. This is his year three. He's a presumed early declare, twenty point five years old. You know he squeaked by the age adjusted metrics in year one um, for you know fancy points per game, yards per team play, rush yards are expected per temp, dominator rating, backfield dominator. Rating everything I look for, and uh, reception market share. However, year two was was a bit of a, a setback. Um, he only met the backfield dominator rating and the, the reception uh, percentage in year two. Um, in year one, he had 156 uh, attempts for uh, over 1,000 yards and 12 rushing TDs. In year two, he had 171 carries, so yeah. more than the 156, but he only had um, 750 yards and just eight rushing TDs. So uh, he's currently projected in mock draft database as a third round back. So day two still, but third round back. He's behind Judkins, who we talked about earlier. He's behind Ollie Gordon, Marion Hampton, um, Ashton Genty. 
Trevion Henderson, which we talked about, and Trevor Etienne. So this is more of a projection type of pick um, than it than than some of these other guys. Um, but we at TDR uh, we have him as a second round guy. Um, and so I have I have Singleton in my tier two of the Stein Index. So he's right behind Trevion Henderson and Judkins. I I. I, I do view, view his profile as a projection and there's some uncertainty and risk here, which is why I reached uh, and grabbed those tier three quarterbacks here before I grabbed him. Um, but, you know, I, this is this is my last tier two guy. So I'm going to go ahead and, and take the shot on, on Nicholas Singleton. Nick Singleton, I think that um, if he has a good year and, I, and he performs to what I think he can do, um, he'll be the, the riser of this class um, into that. Judkins, Travion Henderson type of range tier. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about him too much because I'm going to talk about him as and the podcast version. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to talk about a riser or faller. Um, but I do think at six foot two twenty six with his explosiveness, NFL team is going to be all over that. Like they're going to love that. They're going to be a big fan of him there, and they're going to say, "Hey, I like this kid." I do think he's impotent in contention to maybe come back his senior year. So like there is some things going on there with Singleton that he possibly could. All right. I'll wrap up the first round here at 112. I'm going to take Isaiah Bond, wide receiver out of Texas, uh, 5'11", 180, 75 targets, 49 catches, 671 yards and four touchdowns. Um, I think that he could be the a very, very big riser this year. Um, he's coming over from Alabama last year. That's where his numbers came up and he looked really, really good. We have him as wide receiver 10. Uh, we've moved our rankings around a little bit, but in our Debbie guy, we have him there. Uh, we call him to Stefan Diggs. Uh, big reason why is just, very, very solid route runner. And I think his yak skills is something that you're going to see in this Texas offense because Sark can really dial it up. We saw what he can do as an offensive coordinator. So I think he's going to dial it up for Bond. I think Bond's probably going to be their wide receiver one. And if Quinn Ewers takes that next step, Bond's going to definitely take that next step because he's their guy. He looked good in the spring game as well as that explosiveness. So I'll take the upside of Isaiah Bond there. Uh, so that is our 12 picks in the first round. We dive through it. Um, biggest thing is, you know, where are those tiers at? Understanding kind of what the player values are. And if you have any questions on those trades for that, you know, we have a trade calculator with Debbie picks on our Patreon. You just go join our Patreon and, and Jay designed it. He created the whole damn thing. Um, he came up with it and people are using it. They're going through it and, and looking at it. So we don't have to value Debbie players or your picks, or even dynasty players, we have it all for you. You can just plug it in there. Um, and it's only five bucks a month on our Patreon. You can go check that out. But we are going to continue this. If you watch this on YouTube, we, we really appreciate you. Uh, but we're going to continue this conversation on guys that could rise up into the top 12 um, or fall out of the top 12. We're going to be talking about it on the podcast that you can find below in the comments and description. Um, and, and go join. Join it. Download it. Listen to us uh, weekly here talking college football, dynasty, pretty much all of it. Debbie, college football, kind of how that plays a role. Strategy, too. going to be very strategy-based. So go check that out in the description below. If you're listening on the podcast, just keep listening. Just keep going. We appreciate you. We're going to be talking risers and fallers.